Oh, hey there, guys. Elton McFall here. Yeah, it's uh, definitely not looking much like a spring day today. It's a crappy day today. And <laughs> we were we were showered with days of like, you know, 13, 17, 15, 25 degrees Celsius. And now we're April 22nd and it turned to crap. It's like minus two or so and it's windy and it's not inviting to go outside. And there's still snow showers, but on the on the positive, it's been good weather for me to start my latest project, my big project. As you got a maybe an inkling from the thumbnail, yes, ta da! Yes, indeedy, it is non-specific 73 to 77 Ford LTD or a Galaxy. Uh, the Galaxy, of course, was in its last years in uh, the early 70s. I think up until 73, 74. And then the LTD just took over. There was no need to have the Galaxy name anymore. And uh, anyway, so for I'm gonna, I might as well take advantage and, and sit down here. Oh yeah, there we go. Anyway, so uh, you know you're getting old when you know if you sit down, you're not gonna want to get up again because you're tired. So anyway, I had this idea for a while to do this painting uh, for I guess a few months because uh, you know I've been resting so much and lying down so much, especially my room. It's more cozy there than this small living room that uh, I was looking up my wall and I had a, one of my vintage hubcaps there, you know? This one right here, which I showed you in a video recently. This, uh, say, 50-year-old Ford Motor Company dog dish hubcap. It was about a 9-inch. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool to do a painting based on that? You know, like the actual rim and everything and the tire and all that stuff. So I kept this in mind for a long time. I didn't know, I didn't know exactly what you know, what car was going to do. And then I thought, well, maybe a Mustang, because even Mustangs had these dog dish hubcaps. And I'm like, no, it's too obvious. And I'm like, maybe a police car. I'm like, nah. And I'm like, you know what? For years, I've been wanting to do a, you know, just again, a bright yellow. Well, okay, it's not bright yellow. This is actually called cadmium yellow. I actually thought it was always looked more like an orange. But anyway, I had a good excuse to use that paint. So then anyway, uh, last week, uh, 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 actually, wait, let me go back a little bit. First of all, this canvas is massive. I mean, like, if I were to stand up, stand it up on the floor, up to me, it's like six feet by three feet. It costs one hundred and twenty-four dollars, tax included. So it's so massive that I couldn't possibly take that on transit. It's heavy, you know. I couldn't take that on the bus or metro. And they wanted fifty-five bucks to deliver this from, like, I don't know, from the store I went to on Saint Catherine near. Uh, near Barry. So what I did is I asked Ed if he could come with his Astro van. He did. He met me there at the Omer de Serre downtown, brought it back here. And uh, so then I asked him for another favor. So part of this painting is really thanks to him as well. He's helped me a lot because what he did is he took the hubcap last week and you can see kind of made like a bracket, this piece of wood here, right? And then he, he, dr he, he drilled a hole through it and he put this, this screw with these nuts. So all I got to do is take my drill soon enough when the whole tire and rim is done not necessarily the whole painting and then just drill a hole exactly right there in the middle mark my spot and that's what it's going to look like give you a preview yeah maybe i should have used the tripod oh well whatever you'll see what it just gives you an idea what's going to look like in the future now it's funny these cars they were so common in the old days you know but the problem with fords at that time it wasn't the engines or the transmissions really i mean the engines 302 351s they were great engines but the thing is that they rusted terribly so good luck finding one and not only that they were not to a lot of people's eyes they were just you know big boxes on wheels just huge gas gas like bohemians so nobody really kept these cars the ltd even the meteor uh, so, uh, I think to me, it makes it more special. And on, it's funny because on the other hand, if you look for a Mercury Marquis, a Grand Marquis from those years, you should find one more easily because they're basically more luxurious. These were cars were more Spartan, you know, again, a lot of them, yeah, they did work as taxis. So anyway, I don't have, I didn't have a photo, actually a good photo of a Ford or one of these. Quite frankly, I've got uh, these types of cars, this generation, I could count on my fingers how many of them I've seen over the years. And while I'm talking, I'll give you another view here. And, um, uh, you know, so like one I saw was a wagon once, and then I saw a, a Lando, which was a really higher trim model. Uh, and I seen a couple other ones, but I never got to, to photograph them for whatever reason. 
So anyway, I went online and I needed to get a nice side view here, which I couldn't find. Uh, so I, I got, I found this picture here. This is probably from the IMBD uh, site, which is the Internet Movie Card Database, which is awesome. So there you got your typical NYC cab here, which is pretty much what I'm basing on. I even watched the other day for, I don't know what, the umpteenth time of uh, the movie Taxi Driver, uh, which is one of uh, Robert De Niro's earliest roles. So again, we're focusing here. And it wasn't very easy, actually. It would, you know what? This was actually not hard because I actually did take the cap and I did, you know, outline it and then I draw the outline and then went from there. But as for here where the roof is, I mean, like, just to give you an idea standing up here, I don't know if you could see me. I mean, look how tall this thing is. Look at that. I mean, I have to lay, you know, like, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not short. It's no small feat, literally. But again, I really believe in the expression, as you've heard in the movie Scarface, think big, you know. So this I actually had to re just redo just, you know, over the last half hour because I made it too big. I looked at it, I looked at it, I studied it, and I studied it, and I made it too big. And there you go again. It's there's your proof that typical uh, American car wheel well design. I don't know how else to put it. It's not totally round exactly. It's not truly totally square. So it's kind of like a both, you know. And then I'm you know got your your sail panel here before also was it was too short. I had stopped it here, the orange, and then I just again added to it and added it. You really have to. That's the thing when you're doing automotive art. You know, it, even well, automotive or if you're doing buildings, anything that's a, a lot of detail and angles and lines, and you, you know, you're replicating something. You really have to intensely study constantly the picture. I mean, I can do this stuff, a lot of these cars from memories, but even if I draw something from memory, it may not be exact. Like, like see, like, for example, that 59 Chevy that I made back in the, in the fall, I could do that from memory pretty much because I've been looking at pictures of these things for like 30, more than 30 years, you know. But it's funny, these guys, on the other hand, no, no, these were the, these cars were the unsung heroes of light commercial vehicles, fleet vehicles, taxis, police cars, fire chief, company cars, um, you know, uh, FBI, undercover detective, uh, RCMP, whatever. So, in a way, this... Painting is not only a tribute in a real size format, as you can see, if there was the real thing, it would absolutely be enormous. <laughs> it would be the length of my living room, I think. And uh, boy, I'm poor. But uh, anyway, uh, see, I got the commuter train painting. I had to actually put it here just minutes ago because I realized that I was painting the left side of that taxi that uh, I would have gotten paint on the damn thing. So. And uh, anyway, so it's a tribute to, to these cars, these, these Ford LTDs, 73 to 77, and of obviously uh, the, uh, the iconic NYC taxis. And I'm probably going to upload this, I think, right after I stop filming this, because I just uploaded today a, a video of a checkered taxi cab. Well, it, taxi. it looks like a taxi, like so many. It doesn't mean it is. I don't want to assume that. It probably might be, but not necessarily, because taxis had hard lives, and almost all fucking taxis were driven literally into the ground until the wheels fell off. So we're talking about cars that had minimum, usually half a million to million or more miles on them. So anyway, so that's it. And uh, very excited about it. I hope you're, uh, I'm trying to, you know, as I wrap this up slowly, showing my pad here, trying to think of uh, anything I might have forgotten about. And anything about it forgotten about. about. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, see, since this is such a large painting, it's so close, I figured, you know what, this will be my chance uh, compared to, like, years ago in, like, 2009 and before I did a few murals, you know, inside, like, you know, a restaurant and some of them were inside a car collector's place. And I would just do, like, the, you know, the pavement, the asphalt, I was just painted gray. And, but no, 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 this time I'm actually going to do it like as real as possible, like all gravel, you know, because if you look at, at any street and you look at it really closely, if you're on the fucking ground, I don't know, maybe somebody knocked you out one time or something and you're, you shouldn't sit by, you know, you, you broke your arm, whatever, you'll know that it's all gravel, it's all rock in there with, with tar. So I'm going to work on that. And also, in fact, as for the uh, background, oh yeah, there's a couple of things I didn't mention actually. For one thing, hold on about the background. See, I don't want to do it like with this kind of lighting, this dull lighting, just like this. I don't want to do that. I love this painting, man. I did that a few years ago. I remember I mostly did that in bed, believe it or not. 
I, don't know, I just wanted to do something different, the couch potato art. But anyway, no, I have envisioned like so many books I bought over the years on New York in the 80s, 90s, 70s. No, I want to do this like in the bright sun, so it's going to be like, this is, I forgot to mention, like this already has like I think three coats of paint on it, and it's still going to be another one, you know. And, uh, you know, so that, again, bright sunlight, minimal, uh, you know, sh reflections or shadows or anything. Obviously, there's shadowing here where there's crease, there's the crease here at the bottom, there's a crease here. Anyway, uh, but I wanted to do like, a, you know, a, a contrast with a, you know, blue sky, literally a blue sky. But the thing is, I thought to myself, well, okay, if it's a New York City, city you know, cab, you're going to do a blue sky. Well, you know, where is it going to be? It can't be on a street like this, like Times Square or a stock exchange building. You know what I mean? So I thought, I don't know, I'll do like maybe a half and half, you know, like maybe it'll be like on a turnpike somewhere. I don't know, you'll see a few buildings. But again, I'm trying to lessen the amount of work because, again, when I did that painting of that train, man, there was so many hours involved. I don't, don't ask me how many hours were involved in this, but it took, it just feel, felt like it took, took forever. And I put it for sale online for 1200 bucks, which I know I won't get, but at least maybe I'll get something close to that, you know. So, again, showing it to you again here for uh, any of you who might be interested there. Oh, I'm well, thinking of you, my friend down there in New Jersey, eh? Mm -hmm. Or maybe not interested because it's Canadian. I don't know. Uh, that's an AMT commuter <coughs> or formerly a CTC ram. But then again, some of those uh, trains wound up in the States like a lot of our trains do because Americans have more disposable income for that. Uh, and space maybe even more income thing. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, this ends uh, part one. And uh, I'm going to go upload this right now. And uh, I'll leave you with Gloria to say hello. Oh, God, I wish I'd filmed that. I hope that was a cop responding because that car sounded like it was going 120 up my street. That's a big no-no. Hi, pussycat. Hmm? Meow? You want to say meow goodbye? Hmm? Who's a good pussycat? Okay, Gloria. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, sayonara and... Uh, be well.